Hey, thank you for joining us today for SaaS Ops, using the Jamf Pro API and connecting cloud systems to automate workflows. We're really excited to have you here today and are thankful that you've decided to spend your time with us here at JNOC 2020. This is a pretty interesting session. Uh, today, we live in an ever-connected world of cloud systems that need to trade data back and forth to automate a lot of our workflows and make our lives easier. Easier. And today, I think you're going to hear uh, a lot of interesting nuggets about that very topic. But first, before we get started, uh, the lawyers want me to make sure that I include this in here. This session will include some forward looking statements, etc. But that's not what you're here for. Um, I'm really excited to be joined today by Blair Sammons, uh, Enterprise Solutions Engineer from Better Cloud who will be talking about the Better Cloud platform and how they leverage the Jamf Pro API to garner all kinds of insights and information about the endpoints that are managed within an organization. I'm Josh Yagfeld, uh, Director of Alliances here at Jamf, uh, and I'm excited to uh, have you here with us. But before we get started and before I hand it off to Blair, I wanted to give you a quick update about what's new with the Jamf Pro API. Uh, so many of you are probably familiar with uh, Jamf Pro's two APIs. We have the Jamf Classic API as well as the Jamf Pro API. And for a long time now, the Jamf Pro API, while under development, has been in beta. Uh, but just recently, we've removed that beta tag, and the Jamf Pro API is officially sanctioned for use. And there's a couple of exciting benefits uh, that I'm really happy to share with you today. The first is that we have a new approach to some modern authentication. Uh, so you can get token-based access to Jamf Pro information through the API instead of just standard username and password. Uh, we also have support for pagination of data, as well as sorting that data as it's coming in so that you can work with it in a number of different ways, depending on how you need to digest it or import it into uh, your system of record or your workflow. Uh, so those are just a few of the exciting things that are available to you now in the Jamf Pro API. Of course, over time, we're going to continue to develop the endpoints in the Jamf Pro API. There's going to be a lot more to share. Um, but as we have those things to share with you, we will bring them to you in the future. Um, but for now, uh, you also heard about the marketplace updates in the keynote session. Uh, so I want to encourage you to check that out. There's a lot of great new features there um, that are going to help to elevate new content, new integrations, uh, relevant things to you based on your search criteria, and just overall make the integrations to Jamf Pro easier to find so that you can better connect your systems and get more out of your Jamf Pro environment. But one of the excellent partners that's featured in the marketplace that's here to talk today about their integration is Better Cloud. And with that, I would like to hand it over to Blair Sammons to take it from here. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. Uh, hey, everybody. Blair from Better Cloud here. Um, first of all, super stoked to be at JNUC. It's uh, one of my favorite conferences every year. I love watching all the videos online. Really, really stoked to be uh, presenting this year. And uh, hopefully, this is helpful for everybody and uh, we all learn a little bit. All right, let's dive in. Um, so first of all, huge nerd. So watch out, a lot of Star Wars references here. I needed an agenda for today's session and all I could think of was the Star Wars movie names. So here we are. Uh, we're gonna kick today off talking about the rise of SaaS and kind of what we as IT professionals are dealing with every day, right? Um, the revenge of APIs. So APIs come in, really solve a lot of our problems, but introduce a whole other set of problems, right? Uh, so then we introduce SaaS Ops, and SaaS Ops strikes again to wrangle in those problems and then really address them and fix them when it comes to APIs. Finally, we'll go over to the demo awakens. I'll show you a little bit of what you know a SaaS Ops strategy would look like inside of Better Cloud, um, but obviously you can do that in other platforms as well. And then we'll finalize it with the final slides uh, and go through uh, a wrap up. So let's dive in. The rise of SaaS. So this is going to be like preaching to the choir here a little bit. We all feel this uh, pretty intimately, um, and it's not a surprise to anyone to know that the number of SaaS apps a company has is on the rise, right? Especially given the world right now, 
right? Everyone's work from home or work from anywhere. SaaS really solves a lot of the problems when it comes not only to collaboration and making sure everyone's working together and all this other stuff, but the actual back end, right? I no longer have infrastructure I necessarily need to oversee. Um, it's a lot easier to just have uh, the computer be someone else's problem in a lot of different ways, right? Uh, we see this with obviously Jamf Cloud and kind of the motion of device management completely moving to SaaS based, right? And all the benefits that brings to our environment. So we all feel this pretty intimately. Um, <laughs> however, the inverse of SaaS growth is also true for IT teams. Again, we all feel this so hard. And it's something I've spoken about at great length over the years of the ratio between end users and IT people, right? That ratio keeps frankly, getting worse and getting farther apart, right? These SaaS tools allow companies to, you know, have a smaller footprint within IT because these systems are easier to manage than infrastructure used to be or legacy applications built in house or what have you. Um, but again, that introduces a whole slew of problems. Okay, now I have to answer more tickets per head. I have to obviously help more users like physical people, not just systems per person. And it introduces a ton of pain. And that manifests itself in a bunch of different ways, right? We get lack of visibility. We don't really know as the IT department or organization what's happening in our systems, right? Or we, even what systems we have, right? Did Karen in HR swipe her credit card to spin up their own Slack instance? I, I, how am I, how am I going to find that out, right? We then have slow processes, right? Even with APIs, and we'll talk about this here in a second, even with APIs, it's still a very arduous process to get a handle on something as, air quote, simple as onboarding or offboarding a user, right? We see an average of like 7.12 hours per offboard per employee. Like that's astronomical ROI on automation, right? If I can get those t hours back, if I can get that time back, that's gonna, I'm gonna be able to focus on higher level things that actually drive the needle forward for the business versus just onboarding, right? And finally, you know, those also manifest themselves for security, right? We now don't have any visibility. I have to spend all this time onboarding and offboarding people. Now I don't have the ability to control my data or get a handle on who has access where or whatnot. So SaaS introduces all of these cool new collaboration and lack of infrastructure solutions to problems that we've all experienced, but then this management piece, right? And APIs come in to really solve that problem, right? We've got REST APIs that have tried to standardize across the industry and really help us get visibility and control within these systems. However, we're now struggling to control the APIs because you're gonna to have to either create a script or an application or what have you per endpoint or somehow bring that into your already home brewed app, at which point, why are we going with SaaS in the first place? Why are we adding this layer of like legacy application creation to SaaS? Well, isn't there a better way to handle this? Can't we manage SaaS with the same promise of the future that SaaS brought to everything else, right? So we can see human error here, insider threats, obviously that limited visibility we talked about all really rearing their ugly head, right? We've got all these desperate systems. Like I just said, you're gonna have to make an app for each one, right? And then somebody has to manage that. Somebody has to keep that up to date. What if Salesforce deprecates an API endpoint, right? What if some variable name changes? Okay, well now I'm paying a developer full time to manage systems that I implemented so I didn't have to pay someone to manage systems. Now, okay, now we have this circular loop that I'm unable to really close, right? How are we supposed to do more with less when really the less is kind of just, or the, the more of what we're doing has really just changed, right? Like sure, we're not dealing with on-prem infrastructure and giant collabs and data centers and all this other stuff, but I'm, I still have to have a person managing these systems extremely manually, right? And utilizing all these APIs and connecting all these things. And I still don't have super good visibility, right? I'm still limited with the API endpoints I'm given by said provider and my creativity to be able to implement those into my system. Hey, introducing SaaS ops. And it strikes back and solves the pain points that SaaS brings to the table. First, uh, let's set the table a little bit, right? If we look at the different 
rises we've seen over the decades, right? In the 80s, it was mainframes. In the 90s, it was networks. In the 2000s, see some familiar names there, was the rise of devices, right? Really enabling users to work from anywhere with their devices, right? BYOD started becoming a thing, all this other stuff. 2010s, really saw the rise of identities and provisioning and deprovisioning, SKIM, SAML, SSO, all the things. And then now as we're entering the 2020s, this huge push in SaaS is really the next wave, right? In fact, half the names on this list are SaaS companies or have purchased in the, in the form of HP and BMC, tons of other SaaS companies, right? Like this is where we're going. So we need something to solve this. We at Better Cloud have coined this term SaaS ops, right? Just like the DevOps or whatever other ops uh, acronym you wanna call or, or word you wanna call it. Um, this is really kind of the wave of the future. And if we think of how IT, InfoSec, uh, GRC is really working within our organizations, it is mostly SaaS now, right? So SaaS ops is the practice of re referring to SaaS applications that are discovered, managed and secured through a centralized and automated ops resulting in reduced friction, improved collaboration, and better employee experience. I'm not gonna read all these other slides, but we break that up into a couple key categories, right? You've got to discover the apps that exist within your network and where your money is going and, and how that's getting utilized. You've got to then manage said SaaS via API, REST, SAML, SKIM, so on and so forth. And then you finally need to secure it, utilizing all that information you have, utilizing those management steps, locking down your files, locking down PII, locking down those insider threats, locking down your user objects to make sure that this new perimeter, for lack of a better term, is actually taken care of, right? Uh, spoiler, spoiler, disclaimer, whatever. These next couple slides show um, some product features from within Better Cloud. Um, however, that doesn't change the fact that these are still principles that need to be upheld within any sort of SaaS ops platform, right? So I mentioned discovery, you gotta go out there and find what is actually within your environment. Did Karen in HR slide her credit card for Slack, right? I then have to be able to automate, automate and manage those, right? I'm gonna have to either pay a person to sit in a seat and go do these things, or I can take these API endpoints and manage them in, in, uh, on, in an automated fashion, excuse me. Finally, talked about security, obviously have to lock down that perimeter. Uh, and then a little bit biasly here, um, we do a bunch of other stuff on top of what is required within, you know, the SaaS ops framework um, that, you know, brings a lot to the table. And I would be excited to show you guys that stuff. In fact, so excited to show you guys that stuff. I am going to show you guys that stuff. Um, and like I said, disclaimer, obviously, I'm showing you how to do this in, in Better Cloud. I personally think Better Cloud is the best way to solve this problem. Um, in fact, I think it's the only way to solve this problem holistically. Uh, that being said, you can obviously do similar steps in other platforms and through manual automation and whatnot, um, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it inside of Better Cloud. So let's jump over. So I have gone through here and created a workflow. Now, a couple points on this workflow. Uh, everything you see for the most part here in the this middle page in this builder is an API or a set of API calls, right? And that's important to call out because if you're building something like this on your own, it's not gonna have this beautiful uh, user interface. So in my fictitious company here, I am listening in to one login, right? I'm listening in, in this case, to offboard employees. And I'm going to listen in for their status. Have they been changed, or has their status changed? In this case, if their status is suspended and they're part of the solutions engineering department, then I'm gonna go through and do these items, right? And this breaks out a couple different ways. So first, I'm gonna create an incident in service now. I need a paper trail of what's actually happening within this system, and I need to be able to prove my work, right? Again, this is an API, API call. This is not just skim, just SAML, just SSO. We have very deep insight into these systems and the ability to take very deep and rich actions within these systems via APIs. I'm not gonna go through every step, but I do wanna highlight some of the big ones of steps we would have to manually take that we can completely automate, right? So I'm gonna create that ticket. I'm then gonna update that user's manager, let them know that they are being removed. I'm gonna lock their device in Jamf. I'm gonna add that user to the offboarding user group within Jamf to kick off some automations within that system to remove applications, scrub the computer clean, so on and so forth. Then as I scroll down, you'll see we're resetting that password. We're making sure that user object doesn't have access to files or calendars or any other sort of weird back end entry points, right? Making sure that all their devices and SSO tokens are revoked all the way down across every single app. You can see GitHub, you see ServiceNow, you see Dropbox, Zoom, Office 365, um, whatever application you need to connect to via API, 
we're able to connect to them here. As we scroll down, you'll see we also add a couple of um, you know more business process level steps, right? Like waiting for duration. I just set an autoresponder for this person. I transferred all their files. I need some time for that to live, or maybe it's retention, e-discovery rules, whatever it happens to be. Set that retention here. At the end of that, I'm gonna reach out to that user's manager. Hey, Mr. Mrs. Manager, we've removed all their access. It's been the required amount of time. Can I reclaim those licenses? Can the business retain that money? Can we close them out? Boom, go through down the list and reclaim that user completely out of all those systems. Right, and that is a holistic way to approach offboarding via APIs. Again, like I said, uh, you can do that in other systems. However, a uh, little, bi little bias to better cloud myself. Right, so now with that solution, we can apply the same type of logic to is PII leaving my network? Has someone shared files with a competitor? Um, do I have users that are super admins that shouldn't be? How many users have Slack but also have Teams, right? Um, what group are they in within Jamf? Have they moved locations? That's a big one. We can automate all those steps, again, via APIs, reaching out to all these various systems. And with that, we have made it to the final slides. Um, Better Cloud and Jamf are two of the industry standards within our segment. I think we all know <laughs> Jamf is the go-to Apple MDM and has been for a very long time. Uh, and Better Cloud is now the leading uh, SaaS management platform, at least according to Gartner. So hopefully they know what they're talking about. Um, I don't, I put two things here for Jamf. We don't have enough slides to go over all the, like I couldn't fit it all there. So we got to there, but more importantly is our integration with each other and, and kind of the investment that we're making in this new SaaS ops movement and how we all approach SaaS ops, right? So obviously better cloud is in the Jamf marketplace and that's crucial for us, right? And then obviously we have a built-in Jamf integration within better cloud. This partnership uh, absolutely goes two ways, right? Um, so with that, hey, guys, I really appreciate everyone coming and, and listening to me rant and rave a little bit about APIs. Um, feel free to stop by our booth. I think there's some uh, Starbucks gift cards on the line at our virtual booth this year. Um, feel free to ask us any questions. Uh, we'll be hanging out uh, during the entire conference, obviously. We really appreciate the time. Thanks, everyone.